I'm Dr. Craig Eskude, the host of IDD Health Matters, a podcast where we talk about health, wellness, and health equity for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Hope you enjoy it. Welcome to this episode of IDD Health Matters. Our guest today is Ernie McNutt. Welcome, Ernie. Hi, thank you. How's it going, Craig? Going great. We're coming to you today from the New York Alliance for Inclusion and Innovation. And I understand you're a member of this organization. You're, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, talk about it. Sure. New York Alliance for Inclusion and Innovation is a trade organization for really provider agencies who are in the IDD space in uh, New York. So what do you do in this field specifically? Well, I work for a care coordination organization. CCO, I think we yes. call it, right? AKA yeah. CCO, right? Yeah, great. So the CCOs are organizations that were created in 2018. It was kind of some legislative changes and New York State came along to create them. And they are care coordination organizations only doing care management for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, right? IDD. Mm-hmm. Um, and who are under... Uh, who are authorized for services under New York State. There's a section of New York State um, that serves people with disabilities called OPWDD, which stands for Office of People with Developmental Disabilities. And so under that, in 20, July of 2018, they were, um, this new position was created and essentially these new companies were created. So when you say care management, mm-hmm. what does that mean? So care management is really the independent advocate for the person to get really what they need, want and need in life. Um, and it could be, uh, you know, services offered by New York State under OP- OPWDD. It could be things they want from their community, um, in their community that they're looking to get they don't have. Uh, it could be some of the basics of life. It could be a job. It could be a, their own apartment. It could be uh, meeting friends, um, all include kinds of things. Healthcare. And so healthcare is definitely a part of it because this population is all on Medicaid. And, uh, you know, as we know, people with disabilities, there's a lot of disparities uh, with access to health care. It's been very challenging. Lots of disparities all the way around. Yeah. And that that certainly is a challenge. And so one of the things that that your care managers do is help them get access to health care in general and um, maybe connect them with people that can help meet their needs. Right. I mean, it's a partnership, right? Um, You know, your health care is a private matter between, you know, you know, it's not like we're calling the doctors and saying like, you know, what did you tell, what did you tell Jimmy yesterday? Right. And so we work primarily with the person and with their permission through consents and all that. Then we connect with those, with those healthcare providers. And really what we want to do is help people keep on track. Hey, you're due for, let's take a healthy person, right? Hey, you're due for your annual physical this year. Did you go? Right. We just talked to them. Right. And then, oh, I went, oh, that's great news. Were there any follow-up recommendations? You know, did they say, oh, I want you to go get this test done, or I want you to see this specialist? Do you need help with that appointment? Do you need help with transportation? Where is the appointment? Who is the provider? Would you mind me calling? And let's make sure you, you know, the date and time of your appointment. Let's, we'll coordinate and discuss and make sure that all of that happens. So we're not going to take them on the appointment necessarily, but we'll arrange, well, the how's, the the logistics. How are you going to do it? You're providing support for that person to do what they both need and want to do in their own lives. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been doing this? Uh, so I came into the organization in uh, November of 2018. Um, before that, I worked for uh, a provider agency that was doing um, a lot of services for people with disabilities and not in the medical realm, but in the social service mm-hmm. realm, you know, job placement, um, you know, day, day programs, residential, you know, all those kind of services. Uh, but I was really interested in the care management side because I just feel like it's it's very dynamic and growing, and it's a new way of working with people that New York State really didn't have up until up until that time. So how did you get into this field in general uh, of supports and services for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities? Okay, now we're going way back. All right, that's okay. That's good. So this is uh, back to when I was in college, uh, you know, a million years ago. And um, there was a group home in the town, and they wanted uh, they were looking for somebody to do recreation. Uh, and it fit with my schedule, with my classes, because it was kind of in the early evening. So um, so I started working in a group home for people with disabilities and was kind of the recreation specialist. Come in, do fun things, organize activities. It led to what we would now call community habilitation, meaning like taking people out and go shopping, go to different places, different locations that they were interested in. And I really saw you know, how people with disabilities um, lived and how kind of different but the same that they were with everybody else. 
And uh, I just was really hooked by the the, the people and they uh, and their needs and their lives, and and I felt like I could really, you know, make a difference. So you said their their lives are different but the same. Can yeah, you expand on that a little. Sure, bit sure. Yeah, I mean, so so they needed to at that time they were living in a large group home and everybody had a roommate and somebody was cooking and you know helping with cleaning and, and they had chores and they had jobs and they had different activities around the house. Um, because they weren't able to live on their own. They weren't able to have an apartment or have a job. But And so there were a lot of differences, right? But at the same time, they were also just, just regular people. They wanted to go to a baseball game. They wanted to go shopping. They wanted to have some money in their pocket so they could uh, go buy some things that they like to like to buy. The same things that everybody else wants. Exactly. Right? So, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's one of the, the neat things, I think, about this field is what we are, are doing is is having or helping people to uh, have more independence, yep. to be able to have a life that they they kind of craft or at least have some say so uh, in in what happens in their lives yes. and some input into it. You know, sometimes this field gets criticized for being a little too heavy about we need to do what's best for this person. Mm. Uh, this is what they should do, so let's have them do this and let's have them do that. And none of us want to live a life that's dictated. And live a life that's dictated to us. Right. So it sounds like you've got to always be working to find that balance because people do need different levels of support, right? Right. So, you know, you've got to figure out how much support does this person need and 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 um, help them figure out, um, again, I guess just the, the balance between too much, too little, and living a life that's independent and integrated in society. Yeah. That takes us back to the care manager's role with the life plan. Uh, so there's some assessments that we do before the life plan, which is really just questions, right? As Let me back up and ask you, what's a life plan? All right. So a life All plan, right. very important. Yeah. It's exactly what you were saying, how to have an integrated life in the community that's of your own choosing, that you're really the driver of, right? Put you in the driver's seat. And so that's one of the main jobs of the care manager, right? We're an independent advocate for the person, but what are we advocating for? What are we trying to get? Well, let's write it down. Let's write down the things we're going to work on. So let's make a plan. And then let's enact the plan by going out and finding the services, be it healthcare providers, be it uh, social service providers, community providers, activities, fun things uh, that you want to do, that you want to accomplish, or things you want to change, right? Uh, things that you want to change in your life so you can improve your life and do better. Um, so we're going to put all that in a plan. The care manager is responsible for writing the plan and then connecting the person to providers, connecting meaning um like I said, it could be a medical provider, sure, or be a, a company or an organization that uh, specializes in this area. You know, a person wants to learn something new. Well, let's let's find a class, right? So that would be a provider. They provide classes. Um, could be a, a whole variety of things. But there's a world of services out there uh, and a world of providers out there that care managers sometimes research or find, learn about, um, dig into, very individualized for the person. But ultimately... It's the providers that are actually going to do the work, uh, ma and it's the person that's really going to be making the changes. And the care manager is just bringing, helping them come along, helping them move move along, you know, through the process. Uh, I, I would think that that would be very satisfying in a lot of ways. You know, when we change lives and we see people's lives change for the better, it's deeply satisfying. Absolutely. Friends for Life Residential Care, specializing in support for individuals with developmental disabilities, offers services like adult day support and home health care. Emphasizing empowerment and quality of life, we live by the motto, my ability is stronger than my disability. We are currently hiring, welcoming those passionate about making a difference. Learn more and explore career opportunities at friendsforliferc.com. I'm Dr. Craig Escudé, President of Intellectability. State developmental disability agencies, managed care organizations, and providers across the United States use Intellectability's health risk screening tool, e-learn courses, 
and person-centered training to improve health equity for people with IDD. Visit ReplacingRisks.com to learn more about how you can employ these tools with people you support. Do you have a story or two that you can you can share that was pretty impactful to you and in, in your work in this field? Well, you know, um, we, there was, you know, we, obviously we see people sometimes at their worst and we, you know, help them get to, you know, a much better situation. And, um, and sometimes people are, well, as one example recently was a person who was um, really living independently and not, not able to, they were just, it was too much for them. It was, they were really wanted to be independent, but it was really too much. And they were not uh, following up with their medications. They weren't getting to appointments. They were not connecting with services. And they ended up, they were very alone. You know, they weren't, you know, kind of connected with their, with peers or friends, um, weren't able to do things and their family. And they were she really rebelling against her family, right? It was a, a war of will against her family. And through the work of the care manager, it took a long time, but um, really being very patient, very person-centered, taking things step by step, talked with her about group homes and tried to find one where it was people her own age, similar age, similar interest. And, you know, it's, you know, it's mutual. You know, a uh, person has to be interested. They have what we call screenings, the screening process. We're going to screen. We're going to talk. We're going to maybe visit, maybe stay for dinner, you know, step by step, you know, along the way. But I was really impressed recently to read about how this person who was really struggling on her own was very happy in the group home, Was had a group of friends, they were going out, they were making decisions about what they wanted to do with the support of the staff, and also doing things on their own. And it was a complete transformation of this person from where they were, let's say, a year before. So it was really remarkable. So that's that's um, one success story of probably hundreds or thousands that absolutely you could share with us because the, the work you do really does impact the lives of people, and and that's something that you know we probably should encourage other people to consider when they're sure. looking for careers. I think there there's so many different career opportunities in this field uh, where you you know um, some of them maybe pay better than others. Where yep. none of us are really going to get super rich in this in this career. But, but we might become rich in experiences uh-huh. and, the, and the feelings that 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 we have when we when we do something that helps the life of someone else. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I would like to do a little thing called three and three. So okay. It's three things that you'd like to share with listeners related to this field in any way whatsoever. Whatever a mm-hmm. little piece of advice, a little anecdote, whatever you think. Uh, maybe some, maybe something that people can do in their own lives that can improve the world of sports, services, health, wellness for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Oh, okay. So, yeah, th- pretty broad, <laughs> pretty broad. And I'm not going to hold you to it too too much, but I'd love to hear two or three things that uh, you'd like to hmm. you'd like to say. Well, you know, I think that we're really in a time of change with the field. We were talking before about the you know th- feeling like you know. People with disabilities like the same, you know, some ways very different and some ways very the same. And I think we're at another point of change in our field where we're really looking at a difference at differences instead of disabilities, right? And that that's I think it's important for people to see not a person with a disability, but a person with differences just like they have differences. And and we're all different. We're all unique people. And um and I think that people really um, you know, should not you know, kind of put people in a box, you know, and mm-hmm. say, oh, that's a person with a disability. I, I shouldn't approach them or talk to them or I don't understand them. No, you can, you know, just kind of take a kind and, you know, gentle approach with people and have a conversation or have a discussion and, you know, uh, you know, don't feel shy basically about, you know, sure. approaching or talking to someone with a disability, many times with the parent or with the family. And it's easy just to say, talk to the parent or not talk to the person with the disability, but to say hi, say hello, and uh, kind of see what happens. See them as a person. See them as Treat a them as a person and yeah. talk to them as a person. Right. Yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's certainly something that we can all do yeah. in, in our lives. Uh-huh. All right. What else you got for so me? One, yes, one. I got three now. <laughs> um, yeah, for people that are kind of, you know, thinking about the field or thinking about, you know, uh, the field of people with disabilities, uh, volunteer, right? Uh, Great you know, advice. You know, there's wonderful opportunities all the time with provider agencies, with Special Olympics, with, you know, a number of, of opportunities and organizations uh, to get to know people. Um, 
sometimes uh, summer camps are also mm -hmm. an, an incredible opportunity to work with people with disabilities. Doesn't have to be that could be a job, a summer camp job. Uh, but there's always you know opportunities to learn about the population and uh, see people as people and understand kind of the the you know the kind of the what's important to them, what their world is about, you know what makes them different, what makes them the same, um, and how interesting many times uh, you can have such a nice conversation with people or learn, you know, really learn about them and their, um, their backgrounds and their histories and, you know, kind of the struggles that they went through um, and uh, really see them as people who are, have so much right with them, you know, more right with them than wrong with them. Yeah. We tend to see the disability first. Yes. Can't yes. be done first. Right. And there's so much that, that they can do and participate in and be a part of. Uh, and sometimes it's, it's our own uh, or something with, within us that, that, that doesn't facilitate that happening, that doesn't make mm -hmm. them feel included. Mm -hmm. so we can certainly do better. Right, with that. right, right. Any little difference or any little odd thing, people kind of shy away. But it's, right. you know, just recognize it as this is a, just a difference and this is just a different way of expressing yeah, I, know, emotions I, or feelings. I've it's, often used, you know, IDD, intellectual developmental disabilities. Let's change the last D to differences. Mm -hmm. Intellectual mm -hmm. and developmental disability. Intellectual and developmental differences. Right. And we all have them. We all have. We all yeah. have them to different degrees. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to tell everybody or talk about today? Um, I just, you know, we were talking before about the care manager role. I really see the care managers as uh, people who, uh, they really, in that job, few jobs give you an opportunity to really change lives, right? People say, I want to make a difference. I want to change lives. And um, people can be kind of part of the puzzle, right? sometimes, but care manager, uh, and honestly, the people working at those provider agencies who are really, you know, in the work day to day, that partnership between the care manager and the provider agencies really gives that, that person in that job a chance to really make a difference in, in people's lives and to do it for many people and to, and to teach other people and show other people how they did it, which makes a pathway for future care managers and people to, to change those lives. So it's, it's wonderful opportunity to both change lives and kind of show the way of how it's done for other people. So I think it's, you know, it's, there's a lot of positives in this, uh, in this role, in this uh, capacity as care manager. Well, that, that is wonderful. Ernie, thank you so much for taking the time to be a part of the podcast today and sharing your insights and wisdom. Uh, more importantly, thank you for the work that you do in this field that, that touches the lives of so many. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Craig. Appreciate it. 